Hi, this is Eric Sullivan making the first video of the Turbo Masters pack. You won't see on these videos basic strategy or or stuff like that. What the main goal on this series of videos is to teach you how to think, learning how to build different ranges against uh, against different opponent. There is an optimal range against each opponent and our goal should be to always try to get the closest to these ranges. I know it's very difficult and sometimes um, sometimes it's very hard, almost impossible. Uh, if the other player is a good thinking player then he will readjust and so on. That's why uh, it is getting more and more important learning GTO, Game Theoretically Optimal Strategies. So what I am going to look for on these videos is to show you how to how to build ranges uh, against different opponents and also learn how to play well balanced uh, well balanced ranges against other opponents because you know most of the time fishes does not think uh, that uh, does not think they do not readjust in consequence to our actions so we can play exploiting them without them realizing about it so it's it's very easy the game against fishes but when we play against a good wreck if we start exploiting some of his leaks then if they are too obvious, he's going to realize and readjust. So we have to readjust and it's a circle till we get to GDO. But in my experience, at least uh, right now, many players are far away from from GDO or or at least uh, at the levels I play, I I see very little people who can achieve such such perfection. I would say. Okay, well, first of all, I want to teach you how to exploit preflop tendencies. Uh, I am using the coffee yeah, hood, which is a very important tool. If you if you want to become a better player, I recommend it to you as it filters uh, uh, pre-flop stats and post-flop stats uh, with different effective effective stack sizes, which is really important especially end game because our uh, the preflop opening ranges should decrease and so it's very good to have them filtered because you don't do not have misleading information then okay so we are looking at first billion we are going to see three different billion billions and okay, I have leveled the three of them based on their shark corp result without knowing uh, as fishes. And the notes I have on first billion is he opened many races. This is this is very important when taking notes because although this hat does tell does tell you. Um, if he open mini race, you don't know if he 2.5x, 3x, 4x, etc. And um, it is 
Anavit. Uh, I have acquired using other hats which do not give me do not used to give this information. So now I I take note on their preflop opening sizes. Okay, then he opened min race standard, so he min race. He forbetted me king four off to two eighty my free bet of 140 or uh, one of the first hands which uh, makes him uh, makes makes me think that he he's not as fish as I think because for betting king for off uh, is not a bad play uh, against Rex uh, against Rex or not against all because we cannot generalize but against my ranges uh, I think it's good to to forbid uh, King for off because it's one of the hands you know one of the hands that is not good enough to call a free bet but it's on the close side I would say it's not that far away from a call so when we are looking to make a bluff range, we should look for the hands that are close to be a call, but they are not good enough. So we, for instance, we have a four bet value range of aces, kings, ace, king, ace, queen, uh, jacks, you know, and we have to insert some hands as a bluff and the best hands to have as a as a bluff are hands that that cannot be profitably called uh, but have a better expectation for betting than folding this is very important you know you have to always take the best expectation line you know and Sometimes even defending defending a hand might have a negative expectation, but folding has a worse expectation. So we we take the less the less non profitable non profit. We take the less lost. Okay. Let's see his hat and see what we can exploit. I remember against this guy, uh, he open races too wide. We should, we should definitely have a free bet bluffing range against certain fishes. You know we can get away without a free bet bluffing range because they open race too little. So they open raise a small percentage so we really don't need to have a bluff range and most fishes uh, tend to be calling you know they call a lot of free bets so what we're looking for for instance if he, for instance to free bet bluff is mm, they are fold versus free bet and also they are fault to see bet because if they fault a lot to free bet we can make insta profit depending on our sizings and and his calling frequency or his folding to free bet frequency uh, we can show immediate profit although sometimes they are going to call more and we are not going to make insta profit pre-flop but they some people tend to fold a lot in free bet pots so the the general expectation of our hand is still very good because they fold a lot to see bet so we we want a larger pot post flop so you should definitely look to have a a, a free bet bluffing range you know and we go back to what I mentioned earlier about his 4-bet with King-4-off. 
when we are looking to make a free bet range, if we are playing against a good opponent or an opponent who who we can get away making a free bet bluffing range because you know if he's going to call a lot and not folding post flop I don't see a point in having a bluffing bluffing hands in our free bet range we should expand our value range directly but suppose we're playing a good reg and he open raise a ton so he open raise for instance 85 and fall to free bet 60 percent then if he falls to free bet 60 percent it's depending on the sizing if, if he falls 60 percent to our to a small free bet we can get away free bet in any two but he's going to readjust so that's why you cannot exploit a good thinking wreck without them realizing it and readjusting in consequence so against this kind of opponent i would suggest free betting the hands you cannot profitably call from the big blind but are close for instance if our if our bottom flatting hand out of position is 86 off uh, to a min race at certain stack depth i know uh, ranges should vary according to according to stack sizes and frequencies on that stack on that stack depth but you know if 86 is our bottom calling hand uh, we can free bet 85 off we can if 76 or 7 is that if 76 is our bottom calling hand we can free bet 35 off uh, it's say it's it's if six five off is our bottom calling hand we can free bet bluff six four off for instance and so on i hope you see the point there on how to build the range you know but anyway i really i really hope to be clear there because it's important well this opponent uh, she bets very low it's something to take into account it's easier to play against players who she bet who she bet this little because we can call wider and just realize our equity better so it's very good to have this but we need to know we need to know what does he check back to try to exploit him the best you know if he just check backs all of his air then he should have a high frequency when fault versus proof but this is not the case and even though this is a very small sample you know not 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 enough hands to make to make an affirmation you know uh, but we should start guessing based on the frequencies uh, we should start guessing and try to take note of every hand we see and try to know how does he think about the game you know uh, okay this billion uh, uh, has a check back week i took note about it but then i took also a note that he checked back eight seven in three five seven really deep so that's that's another good check back 
almost never. So if we are very deep, he must see the it's the best expect expectation play. Well, okay. Now we are going to see a hand and see how how we play against him. We have 25 uh, effective tags and we have raised queen 8. We stand as bet half pot with a really good hand, you know. I'm very happy stacking off myself here, but he raises us. So now we need to know. There are very few ha very few cards which we are ahead right now and we are going to be losing if it gets because even if a king or an ace uh, appears which is a bad card for for us in this situation you know um, it can be the king of diamonds or the ace of diamonds so we have a really good hand to just flat and let him bet all of his rows like a nine nine jack 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 gin jack king you know and if we are behind of any queen then so be it uh, what's what's the point in getting in here we have a very good hand and plus he raises ours we should take into account that he raises our C bet a ton, so I guess there are lots of draws in this in this board with this frequency. And I think uh, I, I I'm not really scared about any card, you know. If a king or an ace hits non diamond, I'm not going to fold in uh, neither way, you know. I'm not folding never, at least Maybe I could fold if the board ran out, you know, king ace, non diamond, uh, turn on river. Because if king comes, I'm going to call another street for sure. So I'm, I'm going to call here and planning on, on stacking off, definitely. Uh, and he has a low frequency. Uh, Folding versus our seabed, but this range, this board, I mean, should hit hard his pre flop calling range, you know. In case I had, you know, another hand, uh, like for instance, you know, ace high, I would check back, I would check back also 6 5 hands that, that have very little equity although you know from a mathematical point of view if he folds more than a 33 percent uh, and we see that half uh, we're making a profit but we need to know also how this board interacts with his range in this case i think it it hits him too well to so Although his overall fold versus seabed is 38%, I think in this board is uh, less than 33%. So I don't see a profit seabed bluffing here. Uh, okay, then. <sighs> I think the best line here is just calling against his rain his race and let him bluff and do whatever he wants I'm not going anywhere with the hand so we call turn is a free and he once he bet this big and we have this effect this effective stack size you know I should raise just to get value of all his draws you know and he might even feel committed to call with, you know, uh, 
uh, we could also make him make a mistake. He should call with a lot of his hands, you know. But if we call, we can. We are giving him the opportunity to check his missed draws on the river. So I rather race here, and he he's almost committed. Although sometimes I have seen people fall if he has uh, some some kind of competent uh, check racing range, you know he he should have a good draw and enough odds to call. So I decided to show, and he needs only a sixteen percent. So because he need to put. 325 into a 2k pot more or less almost 2k so he calls and he show jack king which was going to be a simple stack off and a cooler on the flop you know but what we should try to do always is to get the max EV line always just I think this hand again his overall range uh, is played this way the best you know calling our draw we have a very strong hand plus a strong draw so even if he has a straight draw if he has to connect and when he connects, he has to avoid the diamond. So oh, it's... In this case, it would have been the same if I raise the flop, free bet the flop and get it in because he, he was going to get it in always. So it would have made no difference. But I hope you see the point that we should try to make the best play against his overall range, not his exact hand. We, if he has air, we could. We, we are giving him the opportunity to bluff and to increase our earnings, our winnings. Okay.